Yo, what's going on, y'all? It's Cone back here again today with another video. And today, I want to talk for a little bit about none other than Luka Doncic. Luka is one of the best players in the world. I don't think anybody's going to disagree with that if you do. I don't understand where you're coming from, and he has been one of the best in the NBA since his second year in the league. In fact, if you really want to push it back, you could even say he's been that since his rookie campaign. He won Rookie of the Year that season and had one of the best debut seasons out of anybody, at least I've ever seen in my time watching the sport. He has been an all-star and an all-NBA first-teamer every year of his career outside of that rookie season. He's going to do it again this year, locked to make all-NBA first team at this point. Uh, he's a walking triple-double, racks them up with ease, has some of the most insane stat lines you will ever see see already has a number of iconic playoff moments including a western conference finals run before turning 25 years old he also averages the second most points per game out of anybody ever in the playoffs only behind michael jordan out of all people who was pretty good at the game himself he had that game winner against the clippers in his first ever playoff series luca is unbelievable most people will tell you he is top five at least that's my opinion and he's already hall of famer at this point when you take into account what he's done in the nba as well as what he has done overseas like, the fact that he has this resume is unbelievable. Like, it doesn't feel like it should be possible for a player to have done this much while not even being 26 years old yet. So, Luke is continuing to build up this legacy, establish himself as one of the greats, and he will go down, in my opinion, as one of the best to ever play the sport. But while he's done all this leading up to this point, this year in particular is probably the best version of Luka that we've ever seen. On the season, Luka is averaging 34 points per game, 9 rebounds, 9.9 .9 assists with 1.5 steals, while shooting 48.6% from the field, and a career-high 37.3% from deep on a career-high 10.4 attempts per game. He is lethal from the outside at this point. He's averaging a career high in points, assists, steals, nearly getting there in rebounds, and he has one of the lowest turnover numbers of his entire career. So he is putting up career highs basically across the board. If you take a look at the statistics, Luka is pretty clearly having the most dominant season statistically of his entire career, which is saying a lot for a guy who's done the statistical things that he has up to this point. But even if you just take a look at the NBA as a whole, it's pretty clear that Luka's having the best statistical season out of anybody in the league right now. He's first in the NBA in points per game as well as total points, third in assists per game as well as third in total assists, top 20 in rebounds per game as a guard as well as total rebounds, seventh in steals per game, eighth in total steals, and eighth in true shooting percentage amongst everybody averaging at least 25 points per game. You won't find a single number that Luka is not towards the top of in the NBA this season. What he's been doing has been otherworldly. He's been the definition of a dominant force. He's also racking up triple doubles as 19 on the season, including a stretch of six consecutive 30-point triple doubles, which is the first time that that has ever happened. Russ didn't do it, Oscar Robertson didn't do it, James Harden, Nikola Jokic, these guys that are able to rack up triple doubles and score with ease. Luke is the first one to put together that type of stretch, and it's completely absurd that anybody was able to do that, have that type of consistency. It truly doesn't make sense. Not to mention the fact that he had a 73-point game this season, which is the fourth most points in NBA history. There's basically nothing he hasn't done to blow the stat book away over the course of this year. Taking into account these numbers and the eye test, there's a good argument for Luka being the best player in the world this season. He's one of the most insane shot makers I've ever seen. You can put Luka in absolute jail for an entire possession, and he's going to still find a way to drill a step back three from the logo that makes you just throw your hands up and say, what can I possibly do there better? He's able to hit like one-handed floaters from the three-point line, mid-range jumpers, of course, post-up has a lot of size for a guard. There's really nobody who can defend him one-on-one -on -one consistently. There hasn't been a single guy, I feel like, that has found the answer to Luka Doncic, because I'm not sure if there is one. In the past you could at least somewhat rely on the fact that he might miss some of his threes. He's never been a great three-point shooter going into the season, but now that he's hitting 37% on 10 attempts per game, you have to be like locked in on Luka Doncic at all times, and that includes catch and shoot shots, step back shots, creating off the dribble, you know, working around a screen. If he gets an inch of space, Luka can knock it down from three. He can attack you in the mid-range, a great finisher around the rim using his size. The free throw shooting is never elite with Luka, but he knocks him down at a good enough rate that you don't want to foul him, so there's there's not really a hole in Luka Doncic's offensive game. He's up there in the conversation for the most complete offensive players in the league, and one of the more complete offensive players I feel like I've ever seen. This comes along with the playmaking. Luka is an unreal passer. He's nearly averaging 10 assists per game, might get up to that point by the end of the season. And some of the just creative passes he puts together, it's very reminiscent of Nikola Jokic. He 
finds angles that I don't see and I'm watching the game from a bird's eye view. You know, we have the broadcast angle. I don't even see the lanes that Luca finds and he's in there in the moment. They're sending so much pressure on him. They'll send double teams. Sometimes it even feels like they throw triple teams at him and he still finds a way to get the ball to whoever needs to knock down the shot. He finds ways to swing it over or sometimes he'll just still score out of the double team because it doesn't matter. Luca is just so gifted offensively. It's unbelievable. He's also an elite rebounder for a guard. He is way bigger than most guards, but even still, it's a great skill to have especially with that playmaking, be able to create second chance opportunities or just knock down a shot off that offensive board if he grabs it. He's also an improved defender. He's not a good defender. I wouldn't say, I've seen some people try to push that he's a good defender now. I wouldn't quite say that, but he's definitely improved. He's definitely putting a lot of effort in on the end. And you can see there is a vast difference from the beginning of his career till now. He's no longer this massive liability on most nights like he used to be. He is the definition of a one-man wrecking crew. There are very few players I've ever seen that have the same ability as Luka to just take over a game in every facet the way that he can on a night-to-night -night basis. He's put his backpack on all season for them, and recently, it's been enough for the Mavericks to start surging up the standings. They've had an up and down season. Some of their acquisitions in the offseason didn't exactly go to plan. They dealt with some injuries, made some changes at the deadline, and had a great start after those deadline moves, but then went through a bit of a rut. Now it feels like they figured out their chemistry, how players should fit into the system. They've gotten healthy, and they're actually knocking on the door of a top four seed in the Western Conference. That's something that really didn't seem possible that long ago, but they're 9-1 over their last 10 games, including a current five-game win streak, and last night just eviscerated the Sacramento Kings. In fact, they haven't lost with Luka Doncic in the lineup since March 5th. The only game they've lost in these 10 games was against Oklahoma City, and that was a game where Luka Doncic didn't play. It hasn't all been Luka. Kyrie has been amazing. I mean, we talk about that game winner he hit against the Nuggets, which is absurd, but Luka has definitely been doing most of the heavy lifting. And like I said, this has him just one game back of the five-seeded New Orleans Pelicans and just one and a half games back of the Los Angeles Clippers at the four spot with 10 games left to play. And the Mavericks are certainly playing the best out of those three teams at the moment. This is helped by the fact that the Clippers and Pelicans are each top 10 and hardest schedules remaining, while the Mavericks are the team with the eighth easiest. They have a pretty chill run for the rest of the season. They do have some harder games that they've got to lock in for if they want to grab one of those top four or five seeds. But the cards are in their favor at the moment. Plus, the Suns and Kings who are behind them at the moment are trying to catch up. Each have top three hardest schedules. So everything seems to be breaking the Mavericks' way. They are really well set up if they keep playing like this to land one of those top five seeds, maybe even grab home court advantage as the four spot. And if Luka's doing Luka stuff like he has been, it's very easy to see that becoming a reality. Obviously, this would be huge for the Mavericks in their pursuit of a Western Conference playoff run or even going for the NBA title like they envisioned before the season. It felt like they were probably going to have to play their way out of the play-in earlier on in the year, and then they would have to play one of those top teams, and then another one, and then probably the Denver Nuggets. So it was going to be a way harder path, but if they can grab one of those top spots, they ease up the competition a little bit, they can give themselves at least one series of home court advantage. And when you take a look at the guys they have in this roster, it's not hard to imagine them going on a deep run. Luka is one of the biggest playoff risers in the history of the sport. Kyrie Irving is a proven playoff player. You take a look at what he did with Cleveland back in the day. I wouldn't be surprised if they made some noise. So, of course, that's the obvious implication of grabbing a top four spot. But I think there's also big implications for Luka Doncic trying to win his first MVP in the process as well. It's always felt like a matter of time until Luka wins an MVP with the type of stats he puts up and his overall impact. But the team's success has never been quite there to push him over the hump. However, this season, it may be different because, again, they could land a top four or five seed. He's easily got the best stats out of anybody in the league this season. He's got a bit of a narrative surrounding him with some injuries happening earlier in the year. It could be a perfect storm to finally go ahead and get Luka Doncic his first MVP, especially because to grab one of those top seeds, he and the Mavericks are going to have to go off in these final 10 or 11 games. And if he can do that, I think maybe the recency bias too, with Luka just closing out the season so strong, could potentially push him over the edge or at the very least have him finish in the top two, three of all candidates this season. In terms of the odds to win MVP, Luka right now is in third behind Jokic and Shea and a little bit ahead of Giannis, who all feel like they still have some chance to win the award, which is absurd this late in the season. But the odds definitely do have Jokic as a strong favorite at the moment. He's been kind of strengthening his grip throughout the year, especially as of late on that favorite spot. 
it's going to be hard for anybody to take it away from him, but Luka definitely still has time, and we've seen Jokic coast down the stretch of seasons in the past, including last year, so maybe he does that if the Nuggets wrap up a one seed, and Luka just has a strong enough finish to steal away the award. I do think it's going to take the Mavericks grabbing the four seed for him to get into that conversation. I've seen some people try to say that he should win it, even if they end up as like a six or a seven seed, mainly citing the Jokic and Russell Westbrook MVPs that they won as six seeds over the last decade. But it's not exactly the same in my eyes. Obviously, the Mavs have dealt with some injuries, but it was not nearly to the level of the injuries that Jokic and the Nuggets faced when he won it as a sixth seed. He was playing with Faku Campazzo as his lead guard for a lot of the year, no Jamal Murray or Michael Porter Jr. for pretty much the entire season. And then with Russell Westbrook, it was the worst supporting cast I've ever seen. And I'm a Thunder fan. I watched all 82 games of that. So I do think Luke is going to have to grab a four seed to be in that conversation. But again, with the way the Mavericks are playing, that feels like a very possible outcome. But even if he doesn't win it, he's going to have plenty of chances in the future. This is only the beginning for him. And he and the Mavericks are still going to have a chance to go ahead and make a statement in the playoffs. If they go on a surprise run and potentially knock off Denver, go to the NBA Finals, even win it, Luke is going to start to make a bit of a case as the best player in the world. I've seen some people as of late try and push that. I think Jimmy Highroller recently made a video talking about how Luka may be the best in the world. It's becoming more of a popular claim. I still think it's Jokic, but Luka is certainly heading towards those conversations. This is a chance for him to go ahead and make that title his. He's entering his prime. We've seen what he can do in the playoffs. I'm expecting more insane stuff, especially because this is the best version of Luka we've ever seen. So taking into account what we've seen in the past and how much better he is now, I can't even imagine the numbers he's going to put up in a run. Like in 2022, he was dropping 31, 9, and 10 a game en route to the Western Conference Finals, and now he's got more help. He's better individually. I think we're in for an unbelievable playoff run from Luka, an unbelievable run from him and the Mavericks on the stretch of this regular season, and they are a strong dark horse to make some noise in the Western Conference. It wouldn't surprise me at all, and this could be the beginning of Luka building up this legacy here in Dallas, going from a team that seemed like they might be in the plan and even miss the playoffs, to a team that many people now consider one of the scarier forces in the Western Conference in large part due to Luka who's trying to make his case as the best in the world. With all that being said, those are my thoughts on Luka and the Mavericks at this point in the season. We'd love to know your opinions on Luka and this team. How far do you think they could go in the playoffs? Do you think Luka should be the MVP? Do you still need to see him get up to like a top seed before you give it to him? Are you already sold on like Jokic or Shea or Giannis or someone else over the course of the NBA landscape? I'd love to hear your opinions. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. I appreciate y'all watching. I'll see y'all later. Real one, say it back.